everyone, Kyle Lewis here from the Worship Keyboard Tutorial YouTube channel, where we give you tips and tricks to help you with your worship keyboard ministry. In the last video, I played for you a solo piano arrangement that I did of Before the Throne of God Above. And in this video, I'd like to break down some of those concepts, including the intro, interlude, and improvisation. That makes for a nice alliteration. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so that you can be aware of future videos. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. All right, if you're ready, let's get started. Now there's a free PDF that you can get by clicking the link below and it has all of the stuff that I'm playing in this lesson. So let's start with the first concept and that is intro. So for the intro, I'm playing the four, the five, and the six in the key of C. So that would be an F chord. That's the four chord, G is the five, and A minor is the six chord. Now notice that I have this E on top. It's kind of this constant tone that I'm playing with my chord. When I play the E with the F, that makes an F major seven chord. When I keep the E here and go to the G chord, that's a G six chord. And if I play my A minor chord, that's just part of the, the five chord. So I'm just playing the chords in the left hand as I'm improvising with the right hand. Now after I've cycled through a couple of times, I want to get to the C chord so it sets me up for the actual body of the song. So I'm going to play just a couple of times. Then the last time. Then I get to that C chord and that sets me up for the bulk of the song. So for the interlude, I'm playing the same basic structure as I am for the intro, but I'm playing it a little bit lower and I have a little bit more of a stretch in my hand. Now, I have a big hand and I have a, a wide stretch, so I can play F, C, and A going up to that G chord and the A minor chord. I can do that. If you have trouble with that stretch, uh, go ahead and just play the fifths. Now as I get on in the song, I will sometimes arpeggiate that. Now, I didn't notate that because I play it differently every time, but I gave you the basic notes for that that you can arpeggiate. Now once I get playing, I kind of play that same thing over and over again, I break that cycle with a B flat chord. Just makes it a little bit different so I'm not playing the same thing all the time. So let's talk about improvisation now. I'm using various techniques to improvise. I'm using scale tones, I'm using chord tones, I'm using some ornaments and things like that. But the thing I want to focus in on this video are the pentatonic notes, okay? So a pentatonic scale, if you're not familiar, penta meaning five, is a five note scale and it's based on the first, second, third, fifth, and sixth degree of the scale. Okay. Now, pentatonic scales are a great way to improvise, and they work with jazz and blues and pop and folk music. Basically, every genre of music you can use pentatonic scales in. So the two basic ways that I'm using the pentatonic scale in this improvisation is sequencing and specific combination of notes. Okay, So let's take the first one, sequence. In the PDF, I have an official definition of what a sequence is, but basically what a sequence is, it means that you're using a little musical phrase and you're starting it again, but on a different note. So if I take just the C major scale, if I played like going up three notes, I started on C, I went up three notes, and now I'm going to do that same thing, but I'm going to start up a note. And then I'm going to go up a note. You can also go down. When I'm using the pentatonic scale, I have to remember which notes I'm omitting. So in this case, the C pentatonic scale, I'm omitting the F and the B. So when I'm sequencing up, I have to remember that I'm taking out the F and the B. So let's say I go up three notes. Those are three notes of the pentatonic scale. But now I'm going to go up another three notes. I'm going to go D, E, but now I've skipped F. So now my next note really in the scale is G. 
So then I've skipped F, I'm going from E to G to A, and now I'm going to continue up with the G, A, and up to C. So that would sound like... So that's kind of the tricky thing about using pentatonic scales, is that you have to remember which notes not to play. So now let's talk about specific intervals. Now I still have to keep in mind the notes that I'm omitting, and in this case it's going to be F and B for the, the C pentatonic scale. So if I want to build an interval and I play a note C, and I want to skip a note and go to the next note, that would be C to E. But now if I start on D, and I want to do the same thing, I'm going to skip the next note, but then the following note in the scale is actually going to be G. So that's going to be my next interval. If I start on E, I want to skip the next note in the scale, which really is G, and I'm going to go up to A. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the next scale note, which is G, because we're not using F. So G, I'm skipping A. I've already skipped B, so now my next note in the scale is C. If I start on A, I've already skipped B, so now the note I'm going to skip in the scale is C, and then go up to D, and then that gets me back up to the C. So now I'm going to play the section of the video that I did previously, and I'm going to play the section that has exclusively pentatonic notes. So I want you to follow along and listen for the sequencing and also those combinations of intervals, those specific intervals that I'm playing. And the notation is going to be playing above, so you can actually follow the notation as it's being played, and that's also in the PDF. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you, and feel free to leave me a comment in the box below. I'd love to hear how these videos have been helping you in your ministry. Before you sign off, though, make sure you check out one of these other videos, and make sure to subscribe. We'll see you later. Bye.